And um, that was my single contribution, I think, is to, um, to convey to Chad that, that I wanted something like this to happen. And mostly I've just been leaning back, watching this amazing uh, process. Hack Day itself is a hack. And you know, there's no one formally uh, tasked with a day job of putting on an event like this. And so everyone around Yahoo, from the folks that built the network, to the folks that did the promotion, to the security team that had never done an event like this, to the facilities team that you know, keeps the grass so green, and <laughs> just hope it doesn't get completely trashed over, over the course of the weekend. You know, but there's so much um, rallying that came into making this event happen. And that is the spirit of PAC. That's what it's all about, is kind of dismounting the org chart, getting the executives to move chairs for the event. That's the spirit of what we're doing. And when that happens, uh, amazing things happen. And I think it was four weeks ago that uh, once we had settled on a date, which was the first thing, I was walking through an airport and I saw a rock star on the cover of a magazine. And um, a little bell went off in my head and said, God, that guy would be perfect. He should come to Hack Day. He's the, the hacker musician. We need that guy to come. And so in the same way, I sent an email to Chad again. And I said, I, I found our, our musical entertainment for the evening. Um, and I CC'd a fellow named Ian Rogers, who's at uh, Yahoo Music down in LA. And within, what, Chad, 15 seconds, I think Ian had emailed me back and said, I skateboard with that dude's manager every weekend, so we're uh, cool. And actually, he had CC'd the manager on that. So immediately, we were in communication with the, uh, the reps for, the, for this artist. So um, I can't tell you who it is. Um, <laughs> we're, we're not allowed to do that. But if you don't know by now, I think um, there's, there's a problem. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I have the spiel that I give to people to try to give them a clue. And you're already clueful. So I can't really change my material, but what I'm going to do is go much faster. I'm going to give an hour-long talk in 20 minutes or less, and, and then invite Katarina and Chad up to, to talk a little bit more about the spirit of Hack Day and, and how this event is happening. OK. Something special is happening on the internet. Yay! Um, buzzword bonanza is totally great. Uh, and Yahoo's in the middle of it. Okay, users. Don't like that term. In, in Oakland, where I live, a user means something else. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're getting to a world where the people that visit our services, it's not even websites anymore, uh, take on a role way beyond user. Uh, and we have found historically, when you look kind of at these platforms of participation, things that Yahoo has been into for 10 years, things like Yahoo Groups, that there's this pyramid of uh, participation. You've got 1% of the people that are creators. They might start a group for the left-handed Swedish Piano Players Association and you know, get all the left-handed Swedish piano players to join. Then there's the 10%, which are more synthesizers. They, they don't start groups, but if somebody you know, puts them in a, a call to action, does anybody know where I can get my piano tuned, they'll stick their hand up and kind of say, yeah, sure, here's where you can do that. And then there's the rest of us, the kind of great unwashed masses, the lurkers that are kind of deriving benefit from those other, you know, 10%, um, but not necessarily leaning into the keyboard and actually uh, generating any value. And the, the numbers on that can change, so it's not like there's a magic, you know, 1, 10, 100, it could be 2, 4, 8, depending on the type of property. We're moving to a world, though, or we want to move the world toward this model, where the barriers to participation and actually creating value for other people constantly get lower and lower. And some of that can even be implicit. And I'll talk about implicit value creation as well. Um, but this is uh, what uh, sites like Flickr do, and I'm going to use Flickr as a case study in, in uh, getting a lot of this right. So what's happening is with this, you know, pick your favorite buzzword, user-generated content, mass customization, whatever, you can kind of play this game where anyone with the keyboard is now an author, anyone with the camera is now a photographer, anyone with an iPod is now a DJ, maybe that should be two turntables and a microphone, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyone with a browser is now a publisher. And there's something really wonderful about this. This is blogging, this is Flickr, this is, you know, 
um, what we're here to, to help do. Um, but there is a dark side. And uh, <laughs> you know, this, this is the dark side. <laughs> I've watched this clip a hundred times. I just wish once that monkey would kick the guy. <laughs> okay, so I won't belabor the point. Um, you know, to me, this is kind of the worst case scenario that we're building this platform of participation and democratizing the ability for people to contribute and add value. And what we're going to get are stupid people tricks and you know skateboarding dogs and all the stuff that you see today on these kinds of sites. Um, but wait, the world is not all bad. Um, and what I'm going to show you now, and I actually have this running uh, when you came in, are the, uh, by the way, in honor of Hack Day, I, I switched to a Macintosh yesterday, so I'm now a Mac user. Yes. <laughs> um, so what you're looking at here are the top 100 most interesting photos on Flickr um, as of maybe six months ago when Stuart ripped this for me. I think it would be fun to redo this. I haven't had time. What's cool about this is that it's not as if I went into Flickr and picked 100 good ones amongst the quarter billion images that are up there right now. Uh, the users themselves surfaced this. And they did it in a way that's implicit. There's no voting mechanism on Flickr that says, you know, vote for this picture, rate it, rank it. But there's a lot of organic activity around the photos. People view them, they comment on them, they blog about them. And through harvesting that implicit action, they're able to create an interest in this metric, which allows the really cool stuff, or frankly, the interesting stuff, to percolate to the top. It's not necessarily good photography in that a photographer, you know, would, would value it, but it's interesting stuff, stuff that's compelling. And for me, this is the kind of antidote to the uh, Numa Numa guy and the, the karate monkey and all this kind of stuff. This gives me faith that people, normal people, can create compelling, moving, emotionally resonant photos that celebrate the glory of what it means to be alive and human. And you know, it's it's uh, reassuring. Gets me up in the morning and back on the bus. So. Okay, Flickr. Does anyone not know Flickr? Okay, so I can go very fast. Um, <laughs> when, when Yahoo acquired Flickr, um, we had to figure out why we were doing this. And, you know, at the time we had what was the world's biggest photo site, and Flickr was less than 10 people up in Vancouver, Canada. And so we were kind of scratching our heads, asking ourselves, why do we need yet another photo site when we're already leading the market? So I came up with four reasons that I thought made Flickr special. And these are things that are kind of meta. They're not about Flickr per se, but they're <coughs> principles that we want to take to everything we do at Yahoo. So the first is user-generated content. You know, those photos you saw, the slideshow, all that stuff is by users for users. That's wonderful. Uh, it's not necessarily new. Again, GeoCities, Yahoo Groups, all of these things have been user-generated for years. So that's not new to, new to Yahoo, but it's significant. Now the second bit is new and special and different, and that's tagging. So the content is not just by users. We have billions of photos in Yahoo Photos. They're mostly useless, because they're just giant buckets of bits up on a virtual file system. People can't use them. They can't put them to work. They can't derive value from them, because there's no metadata around them. So the brilliant uh, contribution of tagging uh, is that now I can come in and, with a few keystrokes, add metadata around that. Think of what it would have cost to take 100 million photos and source those to China or India or outsource those to kind of have people tag them. Think about the cost and the, the quality that you give back. And you can see that there's something magic about asking people to do this. There's also a lot of danger, right? There's no spell check. You know, people can put in dog or puppy or Fido and, and how we're going to make it all work. Well, it does work and I'll explain a little bit of how um, later. <coughs> okay, the next bit is user distributed content. When we acquired Flickr, they didn't have a biz dev person. Um, you know, that, that was a luxury that they couldn't afford. Uh, but what they did is integrations with popular blogging software. So that the blogosphere uh, started using Flickr as an imaging backbone across everything that they did. And as such, they got distribution. Flickr content began appearing on tens of thousands of non Flickr.com sites. So without having a guy in a black turtleneck going and pressing flesh and 
you know, we could be partners. They just kind of uh, <laughs> made it happen uh, through uh, a simple integration, which is very cool. And then the fourth bit, which I think is probably the most important to this audience, is user develop functionality. Uh, at the time we acquired them, I think Flickr had six or seven engineers, and um, they opened up their APIs as services and basically allowed the community to innovate and co-create alongside them. And all kinds of interesting uh, services have been created. Here's a color chooser, so I can go on a color wheel, uh, pick a color, and you know, beautiful Flickr photos dance around there. I don't know how interesting or how valuable that is. Um, it's neat that you can do it. Maybe for a graphic designer, this kind of thing is cool. I'm not a graphic designer, but I still think it's cool. <laughs> um, here's another one, um, spell with Flickr. So you can come in here and type APIs are fun and spell with Flickr. Uh, <laughs> APIs are fun and reload that and we can do this all day long. APIs are fun. APIs are fun. And the reason that this works is that there's nearly a thousand, it's probably over a thousand since I took this screenshot, people that run around with their cameras and take pictures of letters. And then tag those, <laughs> tag those letters, letter A, letter B, letter C. And then they have discussions like, you know, the K letter, the shape is all wrong. Like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know who these people are. God bless them. I, I think it's, it's great. And Flickr has all of these sub-communities of people that are um, doing this because they can, because it's cool, because the platform exists, and because all of this kind of innovation can happen around that. So these are the four things. Uh, you've got millions of users generating the content, the self-same millions of users uh, organizing that content. And the other thing I should mention is I studied computer vision for a long time, which is you know, having algorithms analyze pixels and uh, try to derive the semantic content of those pixels. I spent eight years studying that and I feel like a complete idiot. It turns out people are really good at doing that. <laughs> you can just ask them to do it. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of trouble and time. Um, so the third bit is you've got tens of thousands of uh, users distributing this content all over the internet for you, and then thousands of developers helping build value. And it's not just the fun, frivolous stuff that I showed before, but mobile phone uploaders and integrations between things like iPhoto and Flickr. And there's just uh, a wealth of things from the utilitarian and, and just kind of useful to the frivolous and kind of fun. Uh, all of this was created by uh, a group of less than 10 talented individuals when we encountered them. And so if we can get this kind of magic uh, associated with everything we do at Yahoo, we'll be in great shape. So, very briefly, uh, you guys know Flickr, so I got a dog recently, so I'm kind of dog obsessed. Um, when we acquired Flickr, you could type in Golden Retriever and get 16,000 photos of the dog. That's so cool. Uh, but with this interestingness, you can now rank order those in terms of uh, the best ones. And you can see the top one uh, are these two Golden Retrievers uh, having at it. Um, the reason <laughs> The reason that's the best, uh, the most interesting photo in Flickr is because all of these people commented on that, and it's pages and pages. You can see it's been viewed over 8,000 times. Over 200 people call it a favorite. Again, this is all implicit action. If we had asked people to vote, imagine the gaming that would happen. It would be another, you know, hey, you vote for me, I'll vote for you, come vote for my picture, all that. The day that this launched, as far as I know, the kind of clickstream in Flickr didn't change at all. People did what they always do. They interact with photos in the system. The only thing that changed is we now harvested those interactions and reflected them back as value uh, to the community. So back to the tagging will never work theme. Um, one of the things that you know happens when you talk about tagging, the librarians kind of turn pale and they can see their jobs kind of slipping away from them and they say it'll never work. And, and um, the, the uh, example they always give are ambiguous terms. Things like Jaguar. You've got Jaguar, the car, the leopard, the guitar, the operating system, or Turkey, the country, Turkey, the bird, Turkey, the lunch meat. Um, you know, so, so how is it going to work? If you just type in Turkey, you're screwed. Well, what you can see here is that, again, using this kind of wisdom of crowds, using the, the leverage that we have as a group, we can look at the co-occurrence of terms. And it turns out that the word auto in Jaguar occur with a certain frequency, and the term jungle in Jaguar occur in a different cluster, and we can break those out organically. So here you can see a breakout of the four clusters for the term uh, Jaguar. 
So they shouldn't be worried. Um, a fun thing to do is also look at words like love or God or peace and see how those kind of break out. Um, so at the top, you've got romantic love, weddings and love occurring uh, against the picture of this tag. The second one are symbols of love, which is somewhat surprising. Um, you've got hearts and valentines. The third one is pets. Again, not surprising to me, because they just got a dog. Uh, the fourth one is um, uh, families. People love their families. So they type in love, daughter, love, mom, that kind of thing. And the fifth one is actually a testament to how uh, good of a job Heather does cleaning up the uh, Flickr content alongside the community. Because this one is lust, as far as I can tell. Uh, this is people <laughs> typing love that man, love that woman. Um, but you can see it's not, it's not too bad. It's all uh, uh, keynote appropriate. <laughs> so, but wait, there's more. The Flickr team isn't done. Um, here's an example of what I think is an incredibly cool uh, feature, geotagging. So I can take a picture, drag it on a map, and then you can do all these cool things. All of these examples were things Stuart had, had showed me. And I've been trying to come up with a single example as interesting or compelling, and I, I haven't been able to. Uh, that's Stuart for you, but if you guys can think of other ones, let me know. Um, these are lighthouses in Michigan. I grew up in Michigan, so this is kind of cool for me. You can kind of tour around now and see lighthouses uh, as they circle the state. This one is cool because I think it's de demonstrating emergent knowledge. So we didn't ask anybody, where is Tribeca? And in New York, there's some arguments about where exactly is Hell's Kitchen, you know? So what you can use is uh, the tagosphere to kind of uh, percolate stuff up. I look for the tag Tribeca, zoomed in on Manhattan, and it's about there. And as we get more and more data, it'll be cooler. Same thing with this example. This is Route 66. You can go on the US. You know, I'm sure this was taken by hundreds of people at different legs of the trip. And you can see some people um, got way off the exit there. <laughs> Or, you know, miss tag or we're lost or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's cool. We're, we're going to have millions of pictures on Route 66, so a little noise in the margins is not that big of a deal. Um, this is a fun one. The food tour of Southeast Asia. You can get Idli Sambar in Bangalore, or fried flowers in Taiwan, or this can also help you understand where not to eat. Um, this is Mount Kilimanjaro. And you look at the jungles there. So this is a great integration with Yahoo Maps, which uh, is an API I hope to see mashed up like crazy this weekend. Um, this one's fun. This is uh, Paris looking uh, at the Eiffel Tower. So you can actually see the tower from different vantage points uh, along the Seine. This is work going on in Berkeley. One of the things that's, you know, again, resonant back to my background studying computer vision, uh, when you take a picture with your phone, one thing that happens today is so much value in metadata is just dropped on the floor. This phone knows what time it is. It knows where I am, if not through GPS, then just through cell phone beaconing. I can look at the closest transponder and say I'm next to Singular Tower 21J. And if someone helps us understand that 21J is in Sunnyvale, then I can actually map to rough neighborhood. It actually knows I'm doing a keynote right now, et cetera. So all of those things can be captured and delivered uh, as metadata without doing any heavy lifting at all. And then we can do this wisdom of crowds thing again so that if everyone here is uh, taking a picture at uh, uh, 2 p.m. and one person or 10 people tag that as a uh, half day keynote, why not suggest that as a, key, as a tag to the next person so that I don't have to type in a triple tap in a difficult fashion. Uh, so that's what this project is about. This is happening at Yahoo Research Berkeley. Okay, so um, now I'm cutting and pasting from a different, I, I did pretty well, I zoomed through that uh, faster than I ever have. Um, this is uh, pulling from a different deck. Um, so it's really about Yahoo and what Yahoo's always been about, which is people. And our basic bet is almost a tautology there that you know people and algorithms is greater than algorithms. I guess unless people are negative, so we uh, <laughs> take that. But um, that's the bet that we're making. And as such, we've invested heavily in social search. And so you see things like Flickr and Delicious and Upcoming and Answers and all of these products that we're putting to market that leverage what we think is our greatest asset, which is the half billion users that are coming to Yahoo each and every month. So tech dev. And at this point, um, 
I want to introduce, and I told her I'd make her come up and speak at some point. I want to introduce Katarina Faith and Chad Dickerson. They are the dominoes. All I do is give them the finger. <laughs> <laughs> the rest just kind of happens. Um, I'll, I'll go on the spiel a, a little bit, and then I'll let Katarina and Chad maybe take Q&A, because they're the people that actually make this happen. Katarina runs the Technology Development Group, and that is the group that sponsors our internal hack days and kind of birth the hack uh, imprint at Yahoo. And the way we think about it is very much in a musical framework. So we're the roadies. We build the stage, we work the spotlights, we um, kind of do the soundboard, we get the drugs, coffee, and sugar. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Um, we're also the session musicians, so she has some of the most amazing uh, hackers on her team that can kind of work with you to, to make things happen. Um, and we're also the kind of A&R reps. And very much in this musical framework, it, it works almost through the whole life cycle of what we're doing with hack. You know, one of the things that management often asks us is, how many of these hacks have actually you know, seen the light of day? How many of them have gotten out in the product? And the answer is a fair amount. I mean, we have hundreds of hacks, and we have dozens of examples of hacks that have uh, immediately or over time made a difference in that end user experience. But the question itself is somehow misframed. It's kind of like saying, you know, you're doing these jam sessions with your friends, uh, this improv thing, and you do it every day for three hours, and it's just an expression of joy. And it's kind of like saying, well, have you made any songs from those jam sessions? You know, it's, it's the wrong questions. The, those jam sessions make you better musicians. They lift your game. They make you better able to get in the flow and create wonderful things. So we don't mind being measured by uh, the actual, uh, what happened there? What happened to my Macintosh? <laughs> I went to sleep. Um, I got to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so part of what the Hack Yahoo uh, thing is, um, again, my single contribution, the finger in this case was coming up with the name Hack Yahoo. I have a background at MIT, and MIT hacking is a good thing all the time, it's great fun. <coughs> this is a slide that came from uh, Bangalore. You see there, at the intersection of Coder and Dreamer is the hacker, and that says it perfectly. Um, one thing we've done is had a bunch of very provocative, interesting speakers. You know, Chris Anderson, the band Negative Land, uh, the band Wilco, uh, Mark Pauline from Survival Research Labs. Uh, there's an internal blog that we have called Hack Yahoo, which is about not just making this about the hack days, but an ongoing uh, exercise that, that informs what we do every day. Um, I love this uh, term, mash up or shut up. Uh, it's a great uh, Chad has also come up with another one, turning angst into action. And it's very easy in a big company of 10,000 people to feel disempowered, to feel that you're kind of in the rank and file and you've got your daily job and how are you going to make a difference in what this company delivers. Uh, so it's easy to get cynical and easy to get kind of a lot of angst, a lot of frustration. And what we found is that uh, this hack day is a way for people to light up and, and understand that they really can make a difference. And tomorrow and in our own internal hack days, we'll have a, a lot of the Yahoo executives as judges. So we'll have David Philo, one of the founders, Ash Patel, who's my boss, the chief product officer of the company, uh, Jeff Wiener, who runs the search business unit. And these folks come and they participate. Again, they dismount the org chart and get right in with us and participate in these hack days uh, as peers and friends. And so what hack day is about, this open hack day, is not just a chance for us to see the musical artists of our generation and celebrate in a festival-like atmosphere. When I told Chad what I, <laughs> when I, told Chad what I wanted, I, I used to, first I started off with Woodstock, and I'm a little bit older than Chad. I'm not that old, though. <laughs> um, and then I, I realized I've got to go to Hackapalooza, and then I said, Hacking Man, like Burning Man, and you apparently got the idea. Um, so. One thing I think that is core to Yahoo is humility. It's reflected in our founders who are just absolute stellar guys. Uh, and it's genuine. This is not a ruse to kind of you know, get you here to hire you. You're not going to find a bunch of uh, recruiters in your midst kind of taking <laughs> resumes. Although, if any of you find that, <laughs> what I'm you know, pitching up here sounds interesting, it's for real. Um, so this might be a good place for you. Uh, but that's for you to decide. Um, part of what it's about is understanding that, uh, you know, 
one person can't innovate on behalf of Yahoo. Even our group of 50 people can't innovate on behalf of Yahoo. All we're trying to do is facilitate. And opening that concept up and realizing that all 10,000 Yahoo's is still not enough. We're not all the smart people in the world. There are six billion people out there filled with talent, creativity, and uh, much more to offer than we could generate ourselves. So that's really what this is about. Uh, doing it with an authentic voice, transparency, courage to be wrong, so uh, this could be a giant mistake. Um, toward that end, if you could not burn down the buildings or otherwise um, <laughs> uh, you know, destroy things over the course of the weekend, that would greatly improve our chances of doing this again <laughs> um, and keeping a job. So <laughs> see what you can do about that. So with that, I want to invite Chad Dickerson and Katarina Fake to come up here and we'll spend the last five minutes just fielding any questions you have or comments. I think Chad wants to announce some good news about Yahoo APIs. Yes, uh, sure. We did a little something special for this weekend, and a bunch of teams rallied to, uh, to, to come up with something. So, do yeah. we have a handheld mic? Do we have a handheld mic? Sorry to ruin these beautiful flicker photos. Um, so, we're launching, or have launched this morning, and in the past few days, three different APIs that are totally amazing. Um, Browser-based authentication, um, which allows you to, um, as a third party, use Yahoo ID to log in to share information with Yahoo Photos, which is the second API, and some other very interesting things. So for more details, go to developer.yahoo.com. And the other thing related to browser-based authentication is we're doing a special preview, just for here, of the mail API. Um, using browser-based authentication. So you'll be able to do things like um, pull the number of new read and read messages and things like that. And uh, that is only being previewed here. This and weekend, right? This weekend, yeah. So you won't be able to get it outside the network. It'll be coming out soon. Which is really amazing because uh, Yahoo Mail has 257 million users. So worldwide. Amazing. So, um, so check that out. And there are also, there are actually more than three things. Uh, Flickr has released JSON and serialized PHP support, and there's something with upcoming. Like so many things have come out in the past few days, I've lost track. PHP, PHP five wrappers. PHP five wrappers for upcoming. So awesome. So five things in the past few days. And all of these teams, Cal, when did you get the request to, uh, to build the JSON support? Two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when did you respond to the request? <laughs> <laughs> that is the story of Hacktip. <laughs> Can I say a couple of words about Hacktip? Please. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the reasons Bradley's gone into this a little bit, one of the reasons we wanted to do Hack Day is that like, I myself am pretty tired of kind of typical developer relations. You go to a hotel with really shitty wet Wi-Fi. Everyone complains about the Wi-Fi. You stand at a booth, you hand out t-shirts and jelly beans next to your competitors who are handing out t-shirts and jelly beans. When we have a perfectly fine campus here with like mega Wi-Fi, a great room. And you know, I, I feel like I'm the kind of person who, if I want to bring a friend or meet a friend, I don't want to meet him at a hotel bar, I want to invite him to my house. So that's what we're doing here. And uh, we're really excited about letting you sleep on our lush corporate <laughs> Green grass. <laughs> and the sprinklers were turned off two days ago. <laughs> but they go on again tomorrow morning, right? Uh, well, we don't, we don't have showers for you, so... <laughs> there will be a sprinkler area. And since this is private property, public nudity is acceptable. <laughs> Please don't swim in the fountain, so... So one of the first things, actually speaking of uh, private property and public duty, one of the first things that we did when we got here actually um, from Vancouver is we had a party downstairs at Earl's um, and um, about 400 people came and it was great and I was actually kind of standing there with the man talking to a bunch of people and I look over and these two women are standing there and they whip their clothes off and they take a picture and then they whip their clothes back on. And um, I was like, I, I couldn't believe that I had seen this. And um, uh, everybody was kind of asking me about it, like kind of later. Did you, did you see that? I, I saw that too. And so um, 
apparently uh, <clears throat> the, the woman who did it was a guerrilla nudist who every Friday at 4 o'clock or whatever um, whips her clothes out off no matter uh, where she was. So, the, the, <laughs> streaker, that's your cue. That's <laughs> um, so, at, you know, after this, um, after this happened, of course, they, they put the photo up on Flickr, and um, I wrote a little comment, and HR um, got in touch with me. <laughs> it turned out the, the entire thing was um, the entire party itself had, had had been completely sort of you know non-kosher by Yahoo standards. We hadn't gotten any security. We uh, didn't let anybody know that we were having this party. Um, people were naked. I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of a, a, a very amusing thing. And that was kind of our introduction into Yahoo. So we kind of hacking things are kind of part of the flavor. So. OK, uh, one or two questions? Commercial API program, any kind? Yes. Working on it. Okay. Commercial API program. Uh, another way to put this is, right now, if you want to give us money to uh, to use our APIs, we won't let you. Right. Uh, we insist that you uh, use, use the free versions of those APIs. <laughs> We're working on that. So if you really do want to build a internet scale business against some of the APIs at Yahoo, we can talk to you about a partnership that would allow us to provide the internet scale and you to build the value add on top of that. So that's underway. Anything else? Okay, we can get, uh, you want to say Oh, something? I just wanted to finish the anecdote. I actually thought it was the best part of the whole anecdote. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the photo, this is the great thing about the photograph. Okay, so in the photograph, there's these two women who have like whipped their clothes off and they're standing there like this. And it, on Monday night, the German board game, like kind of group meets in the cafeteria. And so what's hilarious about the photos, I think you can probably still find it somewhere in is that there's these two naked women kind of standing there, and right behind them is like the German board game group. They're not even looking up. <laughs> <laughs> and there's these two naked women. Anyway, that was, that was <laughs> so, We're hoping somebody will street this one. Okay, well, with that, I think we'll close. Uh, <laughs> have a great uh, day. If, if you're staying with us through the night, uh, have a great uh, surprise musical guest performance. If you're staying with us uh, through tomorrow, happy hacking, and feel free to talk to any of us or anyone in a yellow t-shirt about life at Yahoo, how we can help you be successful this weekend and beyond. Thanks a lot.